saved when we shall leave this which you can't receive till you know him in his fullness and believe you're the one to touch him and receive you'll be blessed in his power and his grace Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we'll lift our hearts in praise with all the doubts in us. That we shall be revived when we shall leave this place. shall be revived when we shall leave this place. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dawn, stay right here with us. Filling us with your love And for these blessings 
we'll lift our hearts in praise without a doubt in us that we shall be revived when we shall be this Praise the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet, please. And as many people as are expecting the touch of the power of God tonight, I want you to raise up your voices as you sing this song loud and clear. Sing it as a prayer for yourself. Holy Spirit, move me now. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Spirit, move, 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 to the heavenly man and declare this loud and clear. My father, My father incubate me tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare that one. Incubate me tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus.
In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Holy Ghost fire. Burn to ashes. Every wickedness in my life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and ask the fire of the Holy Ghost. To burn to ashes every wickedness. Last right. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for a wonderful time like this before you. And we praise your only name for the beginning of this special Bible study. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This is the open our understanding. Lay your hands upon our lives. Move us from strength to strength and from glory to glory. You are our rock, you are our strength. You are our great Jehovah, the El Shaddai. Tonight, let there be no one who will be at this meeting and go home empty handed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Stretch away the first thing I'd like to tell you that this is probably the most important Bible study you'll ever listen to. And you must pay attention to it and be regular. Our theme is called Escape from Spiritual Poverty. Or better say, the Holy Spirit and you. The Holy Spirit and you. Let's pick a memory verse from Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. Because we go straight away into our first teaching which is called Who is the Holy Spirit? You can notice that we didn't say what is the Holy Spirit? But who is the Holy Spirit? Telling you that it is a, pers- it is a personality. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It's in your hand that I want you to shout that memory verse loud and clear. Let's go. Can you shout it again loud and clear? Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by mind. Not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Read it again a third time. Our introduction. This series of studies are going to be one of the most important Bible studies you ever had. This is because of the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. There is a lot of ignorance amongst believers regarding the personality, the activities, and the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian. When thoroughly understood, these teachings will eliminate spiritual poverty forever. Because in this series of studies in the next few weeks, we are going to look at who is the Holy Spirit. We will look at the names of the Holy Spirit. We will look at the types and symbols of the Holy Spirit. We are going to look at the Trinity. We look at the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. We look at the Holy Spirit in the time of Christ. We look at receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We look at the Holy Spirit as a comforter. We look at the Holy Spirit and power. We look at the Holy Spirit and deliverance. We look at how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We look at reasons why you should speak in tongues. Then we look at what we mean when we begin to talk about the fire of the Holy Ghost. We look at what it means to pray in the Holy Spirit. Then we look at the creative power of the Holy Ghost. We look at grieving the Holy Spirit. We look at the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We look at Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts. We look at the seven spirits of God. There are those things we are going to cover within the next few weeks on this major subject, which if thoroughly understood, will remove all kinds of spiritual poverty. 
Anyone who can do some very good thinking, who can think very well, you will know that something is wrong with the churches today. Many people come to the house of God, there is no change in their lifestyle. Many people come to the house of God, they fight, they steal, they hold money, they fornicate, they do all kinds of terrible things. Many people come to the house of God, they say they are Christians, they are afraid of the dark powers. Many people come to the house of God, they find it so difficult to have some small iota of faith. Some come to the house of God, they cannot conquer sin. Some cannot pray. Some cannot hear the voice of God. To some, God looks like one old man far away somewhere. It's difficult to get across to. And Satan has been killing many before their time. The types of believers we have in church today shows that there is something wrong within us and the Holy Ghost. This is why we need to understand this study very well. The Holy Spirit is a person to be experienced. I have no business standing here talking to you after the Holy Ghost has been taken out. So one of the greatest things that can happen to you to ignite your spiritual life and to move you forward is to be in regular communion with the Holy Ghost. And listen to me very carefully. The grace that we share every day, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, or communion of the Holy Spirit, Shows that we should be in communion with that Holy Spirit who is a person. Whenever that Holy Spirit is giving free access to our lives, poverty disappears. And once the seat of spiritual poverty is broken, as a matter of necessity, the physical poverty disappears. The whole health was in a state of wasteful poverty before the Holy Spirit came in. But when the Holy Spirit appeared, things just changed. When it comes, it brings abundance into a person's life. Let's look at these 12 important truths about the Holy Spirit, which is in our outline there. But before then, let's go to the book of Acts of Apostles. Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7. Acts chapter 1, verse 7. Jesus had come to earth and had spent three and a half years. Contrary to what Judas believed will happen, that if Jesus was sufficiently threatened, he would exhibit his power, he would take over government, and they would become ministers. In fact, most of the disciples, that's what they were thinking about. That the Messiah will come, the Messiah will topple the government, the Messiah will take over government, and all the disciples will become ministers and governors. It is interesting to know that even as of the time Jesus wanted to go away, some of the disciples were still thinking like that. That's why they asked him a question in Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they were therefore came together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? That's what they were talking about. I think Jesus just overthrow the Roman Empire and take over. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father had put in his own power. So, but ye shall receive power. Can you say that loud and clear? You shall receive what? After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So straight away, you will see that the gateway to spiritual power is the Holy Spirit. The gateway to salvation is the cross. The gateway to supernatural manifestation of the power of God is the Holy Spirit. So you want to manifest the power of God, you want to become a powerful man or woman of God, the gateway is the Holy Spirit. All those people that God used to turn the environment upside down for Jesus, they all started when the Holy Ghost came upon them. I know there will be somebody here tonight that the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon your life and your enemies shall flee. If you are the person, let me hear you shout hallelujah. So, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, that is in your hometown, 
in Judea, in your surrounding places, in Samaria, in places where they don't want to see you, and to the uttermost part of the earth. They asked Jesus a question. When are we going to be in charge? He said, no, that's not relevant to you. He said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Something happened to the apostles, beloved. Those men who ran away when Jesus died and went to hide. Something happened to them. It clicked in their spirit. They now became terror to the enemy. That thing that happened to them is the power of the Holy Ghost. And I tell you the truth. When that power comes upon you in a true fashion, your enemies will admit that you are not the same person again. They will confess that you have become another man, another woman. I know that tonight that power will come upon somebody here. And you will become another man. And you become another woman. If you are the person, shout hallelujah. Twelve important truths about the Holy Spirit. Number one. The Christian's heart is the Holy Spirit's home. Can you say that after me? Can you make it personal? My heart is the word. That's why the Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Holy Spirit dwells in you, and that whosoever destroys the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Because that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why we preach and preach and preach. Don't defile yourself. Don't defile your body. Because each defilement you carry out, you are abusing the Holy Ghost that is in you. Two. Unless we have within us that which is above us, we soon shall yield to the pressures around us. Unless that Holy Spirit which is above us comes into our lives, the pressure of this world can push us aside. Herein, beloved, lies the difference between other religions and Christianity. The power of the Holy Spirit. It is in Christianity that that power comes upon your life and your life changes. Three. If you have the Holy Spirit on the inside, you can stand any kind of battle on the outside. Four. Christ departed so that the Holy Ghost could be imparted. He said, I will, when I go away, I will send you another comforter. But he himself is a comforter. He said, there is another comforter again. That will come, that comforter is the Holy Ghost. The human spirit fails unless the Holy Spirit fails. Six. You cannot drink of the Holy Spirit on Sunday and the spirits of the world during the week. It's not possible. Look at number seven. The Holy Spirit can do more in one minute than we can do ourselves in a lifetime. What He can do for you in one minute will be greater than all the sweat, all the struggle you can struggle and struggle for for the whole of your life. Eight. He who has the Holy Spirit in his heart and the Scripture in his hands has all he needs. Nine. The Holy Spirit is God at work. When Jesus said, no, you know that you, you too, you are gods. Because once the Holy Spirit enters into you, you become a, a small god. Ten. To build temple is easier than the temples of the Holy Spirit. That's why you can see people walking in the house of God, ministers who are far from the Holy Spirit as heaven is far from the earth. Eleven. One taught by the Spirit knows the will of God. Twelve. Without the Holy Spirit... The preacher is as helpless before a sinner needing a savior as Samson before the life. These are 12 important truths. 12 important truths. I'd like you to listen to me very, very carefully. In Acts chapter 2, something happened. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind 
that is rich. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Beloved, not that they were dreaming. It was not a vision. They could see it. So when the Holy Spirit moves into a place, there will be manifestations. Physical manifestations. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. As the seed of God gave them utterance. Now, listen carefully. And I'll be a bit slow now. The Holy Spirit is a person that many believers do not know. Many are so ignorant of the Holy Spirit that they talk about entry into the Spirit. Now, it's complete ignorance. Many think of the Holy Spirit as a cloud or as wind or a powerful force. Many of us sitting there listening to me here tonight, we have received him into our lives. But we really do not know him. There's a difference between receiving a person and knowing a person. There's a difference. Many of us now, if you see the picture of Nigerian head of state, you say, yes, yes, this is the head of state. You know him through the pictures in the newspapers. Some of us say, I've never seen him before. I mean, physically. Apart from television and newspapers. So that's your own level of knowledge. You know him through the newspapers. There are some people who have gone higher than that. They have seen him physically. They know him too. But there are some people again, they work with him in the office. So they know him better than those ones. Then surely he must have some friends. Those who know him again better than the one in the office. But then his wife will know him more than all those people. So when you say no, 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 it has levels. Many of us have the Holy Spirit. We just do not know him. But who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. I say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. As put in Genesis, if you look at the book of Genesis, the book of the beginnings, you see all three demonstrated. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit, moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. So there you see God, you see the Spirit, and you see the Word. All three coming forth. Many have no problems visualizing God the Father. Many have no problem visualizing God the Son. At least they you know that Jesus came. But when they talk about the Holy Spirit, many get lost. You may really not understand the Holy Spirit too much until you understand the Trinity. Somebody is coming to deal with that thoroughly. But understand that there are three persons in the Godhead. Let us make man in our own image. Meaning that it's not only one person talking. Say, let us make man. Say, behold, this man has become as one of us. In Genesis 11, say, let us go down. The book of Isaiah says, who will go for us? There are also plenty of passages referring to all the three, all the three. The classic one that most people understand is what we find in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Matthew 3, 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice of heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father spoke from heaven. The Spirit came as a dove, came upon Jesus below. So you can see the three of them being demonstrated in that place. So God the Father is a personality. God the Son is a personality. God the Holy Spirit is a personality. 
The Holy Spirit who has bodily shape. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Godhead is in three different personalities, but it's one. Just like water. Water can exist in three forms. Water can exist as liquid. That's the one you drink. Water can exist as ice. That one you use it to cool your drink or use it to cool things. When water is sufficiently hot, water can exist as steam. But it's still water. That is how to understand the Godhead. All three are God, but they are distinct personalities. It's like a sister who is in church and she's a teacher. By profession, she's a teacher. To her mother, she's a daughter. To her husband, she's a wife. But to the students, she's a teacher. But it's the same person with three different roles. Every time you come across God the Father in the Bible, is speaking or is commanding. When you come across God the Son, is doing or is the doer. When you come across God the Holy Spirit, He manifests. He is the power that makes things to happen. Somebody has described Trinity as Son, the Son. He says Son represents the Father. The light the Son gives represents Jesus. The heat the Son gives represents the Holy Spirit. So the Father is the source of everything. Jesus is the deliverer of those things and the Holy Spirit is the one who imparts those things. When we are weak, it's that Holy Spirit that helps our weaknesses. So that Holy Spirit is God's executive agent in the world today. He's continuing the work that Jesus began. The reason you are still finding some small, small sanity in this world is because the Holy Spirit has not been taken out. The Bible says a time will come when the Holy Spirit will be taken out then you will see chaos of the highest order. Immediately the rapture happens and all the believers who have the Holy Spirit have been removed. There will be terrible chaos in the earth here. Is that Holy Spirit that is coming so many terrible things down? Coming down, coming down. And immediately it's taken out. Chaos will take over. The Holy Spirit is continuing the work that Jesus came to do thousands of years ago. So the Holy Spirit is not just an experience, it's a person. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling or an emotion, it's a person. It's in charge of the affairs of the kingdom of God on earth today. Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. When Jesus went, he's the comforter that is now with us. The Holy Spirit is the chief executive of God's program. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals all the plan and purposes of God. And is the one who helps to operate those revealed plans of God. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the hidden treasures of the kingdom of God. And is the most valuable asset you can have as a Christian. This is, down, is therefore a very serious matter. When you have somebody who claims to be a Christian and you are far away from the Holy Ghost. You are not in communication with the Holy Spirit. You don't know how to speak to the Holy Spirit don't know how to communicate and get information from the Holy Spirit, you are not in communion with the Holy Spirit, then you live a life of spiritual poverty. Many casters say, well, I know I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I have never had him talking to me. No, he's speaking to you only that you didn't know he was the one speaking. When you don't do your quiet time, and a quiet voice say you have not done your quiet time, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit. When you forgot about the voice, say you have no prayer this morning. Where are you going? That's his voice. When somebody is saying something you don't really like, and you're already getting upset, you want to talk. And the quiet voice has said, Keep quiet. Don't say anything. That's his voice. Only that you did not become friendly with it so that I can talk to you on a regular basis. I know there will be somebody here tonight that you will leave this place another man and another woman. You are the person shouting loud, amen. If you take your hand out now, from just barely looking at who is the Holy Spirit there, and the points that are listed on that, you find that it's a very, very serious matter. For you to be friendly with the Holy Spirit, for you to know about the Holy Spirit, for you to understand the workings of the Holy Spirit, 
for you to know that without that Holy Spirit, a believer is finished. There is nothing the Holy Spirit cannot do for your life. But you say, I don't know why I'm failing exams. The Holy Spirit can come to you and say, okay, you have a, an exam tomorrow. Read this. Read that. Don't bother about this one. Don't bother about that one. Oh, the Holy Spirit can even reveal all the questions so you just write it like this at your front. You will see all the questions. You may be going to an interview. And you say, Holy Spirit, help me. So, okay, when you get there, this is what I'm going to ask you. This is what I'm going to ask you. This is what I'm going to ask you. Beloved, we've lost so many important advantages of things we should grab into because of ignorance. Who is the Holy Spirit? Look at your outline. We may not be able to go through everything here tonight. But you are to go home. Take your Bible before the next Bible study. Open to these passages one by one. Use it for your quiet time. Use it for personal upliftment of your spiritual life. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the executor of the third head. And he is the one who executes whatever the Godhead wants to do. When there is work to do, it manifests. Two, the Holy Spirit is God's executive agent in the world today. Back there in the Old Testament, the God you read about mostly in the Old Testament was God the Father. God the Father of the Old Testament took no nonsense from anybody. Once you make a mistake, fire will fall. You touch the heart of God, you die. You abuse a man of God, leprosy catches you. You make a mistake, you get into trouble. And the people of Israel who were calling upon God that time, their life was messed up because the God they knew was in the tabernacle. It, it was not in their lives. So anytime they wanted God, they went to the tabernacle or they went to the temple. He was not living in them. And the enemy messed them up thoroughly. Then Jesus now came in the New Testament. And he did a very short ministry. He moved about in a restricted area called Palestine. Built up 12 disciples. Used them to turn the world upside down. And then they crucified him and he died. And he went back to heaven. But he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send you another comforter who will be with you forever. That another comforter is the Holy Spirit. And our ignorance about him is terrible. So the Holy Spirit is that God's executive agent in the world today. Three, the Holy Spirit is the bridge to God within you. Once that Holy Ghost incubates your spirit man, you get on fire. Four. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God instilled within his children. Five. The Holy Spirit is a constant resource and companion. That is, that God is now within you. You don't have to be looking for him outside. You are, he's already entered into the temple of your heart. He's there within and you must now form a communion with that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. We've made that very clear when we started. Seven, the Holy Spirit is a person with a mind, emotions, and will. Eight, the Holy Spirit is God present within us and active amongst us. Nine, the Holy Spirit is God around us in everyday experience. Ten, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity, whom Jesus promised will come to be our counselor. Eleven. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. Twelve. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Thirteen. The Holy Spirit is the creator and giver of life. Fourteen. The Holy Spirit is the director of ministers. Next. The Holy Spirit is the instructor of ministers. The Holy Spirit is the one who speaks in and by the prophets. The Holy Spirit is the one that strives with sinners. The Holy Spirit is the one that reproves. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the helper of our infirmities. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides. The Holy Spirit is the one that sanctifies. The Holy Spirit is the one testifying of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one that glorifies Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one that searches all things. The Holy Spirit is the one that dwells with saints. The Holy Spirit is the one that inspired the writing of the scriptures. The Holy Spirit is the one present at work in creation. The Holy Spirit is the one that came upon Joseph 
it came upon Moses, it came upon Joshua, it came upon Othniel, it came upon Gideon, it came upon Jephthah, it came upon Samson, it came upon Saul, it came upon David, it came upon Elijah, it came upon Elisha, it came upon Zechariah the high priest, it came upon the elders in Israel. So you can see, there is nothing you can do outside the personality and the person of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 3. Look at John chapter 3. John 3 8. John 3 8. The wind blew it where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The wind blew it where it listed. You hear the sound. Thou canst not tell whence it comes or whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Once that Spirit is in your life, you become like the wind. The wind is mysterious in action. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. And you cannot cage it. The wind is powerful in movement. When you move by the Spirit of God, you move with power and by power. The wind is independent in operation. You can't cage the wind. The wind is invisible in action. It just comes. You can't see it coming. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. So everybody born of the Spirit is as mysterious, as powerful as when the wind is moving. The wind is cleansing in service. The wind varies directions and it has penetrating power. That's when that spirit comes upon you. There are things in the world which are very, very mysterious and strange. The beauty of the believer that he also has within him the Holy Spirit which can operate like the wind and operate in a mysterious way because it's the mysterious that can fight the mysterious. The dark world may see you, but they will not be able to predict your actions. You need to begin to operate like the wind, but you can only do that when the Holy Spirit is within. You will operate like the wind when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You cannot be trapped because that Spirit of God is within you. I know that there is somebody here tonight. You will not go home the way you came here. Those who saw you coming here, when they see you going back, they will know that something has happened in your life. Let your amen be loud and clear. Let your amen be loud and clear. Let your amen be loud and clear. The Bible tells us, that even in our prayers, we know not how or what we should pray. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, even in our prayers, see, we don't know how or what we should pray the way we should really pray. Romans 8, 26. Say, likewise, Romans 8, 26, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought to but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered groanings which cannot be uttered your spiritual life will be a washout without the regular touch of the Holy Spirit the person will be like a football but there is no wind inside the football the person will be like a trunkless elephant. Christianity will be very, very difficult without the correct baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because flesh cannot obey God. Human intelligence cannot overcome Satan. The devil can defeat any Christian without the Holy Spirit any time. Such Christians are playing with Satan and they are gambling with dogs. Some of those who are rushing to deliverance can really, the place they should rush to is the place of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because once that power comes upon you and brings the anointing that breaks the yoke along with it, 
The first thing it will do to you is to break your own personal yokes. But sometimes we turn everything upside down. I remember that sister many years ago. There was a citywide crusade in this Lagos. I think this crusade was sometimes 1975 or so. And in that crusade, the crusade takes place in the evenings, but in the morning, there is morning sessions that's carried out. That morning session has different departments. There is a section for those seeking for salvation, section for those who want to be ministers, section for those who are seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost, there is section for those who are witches, wizards, and they want deliverance. Section for those who are sick, they want healing. So once you come, you just go to the appropriate sections. And for the next six hours, you'll be there. A lot of marvelous things used to happen in those meetings. There's a section for those seeking the fruit of the womb. There's a woman going to that section for fruit of the womb. She's been going and going and going and going, but there's no difference. Then she went for counseling. And she was counseling. She said, Madam, leave that meeting. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? She said, No. I said, don't go to that meeting again. First of all, go to the meeting of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So she went. And the prayer started. And there, they just give you one some small lectures. And they say, begin to pray. You're on your own. So if God wants to give it to you, you get it today. And if you are ready, you get it today. If you are said that, God, I will not let you go, you get it today. And the people begin to pray. So the people went there. They started praying that day. And this woman was there. She's been married for 20 years. She prayed. The power of the Holy Spirit now came upon her. Immediately that happened. And she began to speak in tongues. She fell into labor. They had to rush her away. Because she was in great pains. Took her to the toilet. This woman delivered. Right there in the toilet. A fully bodied snail. Next month, she got pregnant. You see, when the power came upon her, the power challenged the stranger that he met in the body. And that stranger had to be pushed out. No wonder the Bible says, the strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. Before the strangers could fade away and be afraid out of their close places is when a fearful visitor comes in. Some claim, I don't know why I'm not free from bad dreams. I don't know you get the Holy Ghost. Say, so God, I don't want to be fighting people anymore. You get the Holy Ghost. So, oh God, take worldliness away from me. You get the Holy Ghost. Then once he is in you, correctly, you become a new person, a small God. And this is where we should now be very, very careful. And we should ask ourselves questions. Really, do you want to continue like this in your present level of spiritual power you know as well as I do the problems cannot be solved at the level of the power that created it you have to go beyond the level of the power that created it know the problems you face you know the enemies at home you know they don't like you you know those who are ready to kill you physically and spiritually you know the problems the children are facing you know what happens in your dreams? Do you really want to continue like this? If you don't want to continue, the way out is the way of power. Power is the only thing the enemy respects. Power is the only language the enemy respects. You have an opportunity here tonight. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost to receive him into your life. And if you say you have received, you have an ample opportunity here tonight to receive a second touch. The more touch of heaven that you receive, the more your life will change. The more your enemy will be afraid of you. The closer you are to the Holy Spirit, the more miracle power your life will exhibit. The story tonight is very straightforward. It's like the story of those lepers. Say, so if we keep quiet, we shall die. So they refuse to keep quiet. So what we are saying tonight is this. Whatever you are going through, when a problem confronts the Holy Spirit, or when the Holy Spirit confronts a problem, something must happen. The Holy Spirit comes and begins to reveal the root of the problem to you. That's the first thing. It's the Holy Spirit that will be telling you this, this problem is due to sin. 
Is it a curses? Is it a evil covenant? Is it a satanic attack? Is it unfriendly friends? Is it a power encounter? It will reveal to you the source. Don't only that. That the Holy Spirit will now begin to help you to pray the right prayers. Sometimes we begin to pray for already available blessings. When we should be standing against the powers hindering us. And like we used to tell you here, the fact that God is pouring out his blessing, pouring out his power does not mean that you receive it. The hand of the receiver might have been chained. His spiritual pockets may be leaking. Many people are suffering unnecessarily. We need to understand that what we need more than at any other time in the history of the church is a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit. Look at number 43. The Holy Spirit is the one that led Israel through the wilderness. The Holy Spirit is the one that will minister to Israel during the millennium. The Holy Spirit is the one that restrains the power of Satan. The Holy Spirit is the one that provided the Savior with his earthly body. The Holy Spirit is the anointed Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that directed the Savior to be tempted by Satan. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowered the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that caused the Savior to sorrow. The Holy Spirit is the one that caused the Savior to rejoice. The Holy Spirit is the one that led the Savior to Calvary. The Holy Spirit is the one that raised the body of the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts the unsafe person of sin, righteousness, and judgment. The Holy Spirit is the one that gave birth to the church. The Holy Spirit is the one that inspires the worship service of the church. The Holy Spirit is the one that directs church missionary works. The Holy Spirit is the one that hates the church singing service. The Holy Spirit is the one that appoints church preachers. The Holy Spirit is the one that anoints the church preachers. The Holy Spirit is the one that wants church members. The Holy Spirit is the one that determines the church decisions. The Holy Spirit is the one that directs the church evangelistic attempt. The Holy Spirit is the one that is able to condone or condemn the church. The Holy Spirit is the one that regenerates the believing sinner. The Holy Spirit is the one that baptizes the believer. The Holy Spirit is the one that indwells the believer. The Holy Spirit is the one that seals the believer. The Holy Spirit is the one that frees the believer. The Holy Spirit is the one that conforms believers to the image of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one that strengthens the believer's new nature. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals biblical truth to believers. The Holy Spirit is the one that assures believers concerning salvation and service. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives believers liberty. The Holy Spirit is the one that fills the mouth of believers with appropriate things. The Holy Spirit is the one that prays for believers. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides the believers. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches the believers. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers the believers for witnessing. The Holy Spirit is the one that imparts the love of Christ to believers and through the believers. The Holy Spirit is the one that will someday raise the bodies of all departed believers. And what is our conclusion? You cannot make it without the Holy Spirit. It is not optional to make him your friend. And that takes us to Romans chapter 8 again. Romans chapter 8. Let's begin to read from verse 6. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are us not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And it's as far as you are not being led by the Spirit, beloved. No matter what name you call yourself, the Bible says you are not 
a daughter, you are not a son, you are not a child of God. Tonight, we need to cry to heavens. We need to start getting used to this personality. Who is the Holy Spirit? We need to recognize that he's God's agent in the world today. And he's closer to us. He's like a friend. That's why some people wake up in the morning and say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Because they've taken him as a friend. The absence of the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer has resulted in many terrible things. A lot of believers have had themselves to blame because they lack the fire, the power, the operation of the Holy Spirit in their lives. The beautiful thing is that God is always ready. Whenever we are ready to fill us with power so that we can escape from every spiritual poverty. Make tonight a night in your life you never forget by crying to heavens for a touch of his spirit. And if you have received a touch, you've got to receive a second touch. If you have received a second touch, receive a third touch. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet now. We need to give him time to walk in our lives here tonight. I see people's lives changing. If they will key into the teachings of tonight and all the, the whole of these teachings. If you are here, you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is a prayer I want you to pray. If you have already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want a fresh touch of his power. That is a prayer I want you to pray. Anything can happen as you pray this prayer. Because anywhere the Holy Ghost is invited, it comes in in power. It comes in in fire. It comes in with his strength. That's why in those days when we were young believers, whenever we begin to sing Holy Ghost fire come upon me like the day of Pentecost, things begin to happen because our hearts were open then. So right there where you are, while your eyes are closed, ask the Lord to forgive you of any sin that will make the Spirit to avoid you tonight. I want to leave this place another man, another woman. I want to make a mark in my life as a Christian. I want the communion and power of the Holy Spirit upon my life. I want people to know that I serve the living God. I want people to know that my God can do all things. I want to plug myself into the socket of his power. Anything that will hinder me tonight, oh Lord, forgive me now. I am ready, I am ready to key into that power. As the Lord to forgive you. Makatan de Santika. Ribola Kita de Kamboka Sentia. Dana Riboda Kalaka Poshenta. Something is already happening to somebody over there. God is already opening your eyes. You are seeing a vision, but more things are yet to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This is not the time to walk around. When the Holy Spirit is about to move, people don't just walk around aimlessly. They don't move about aimlessly. Wherever you are, I challenge you by the power of God. That if you will cry out with your heart to the Lord tonight for the fire power from above, you too will notice a change in what is going on in your life. Those of you who are here tonight and you have not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the prayer I want you to pray is this Holy Ghost, incubate my life. Listen to me carefully. As you are saying it, as you are saying it, Holy Ghost will cubate my life. Holy Ghost will cubate my life. Holy Ghost will cubate my life. Don't change it. After a while, what you are saying in your mouth will alter. Once it has altered, don't go back to the English. Just continue those languages you are speaking, which may not make any sense. If you are waiting for it to make sense or to sound like that of another person, you will not receive the baptism. Holy Ghost! incubate my life. That's your prayer. Those who are yet to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Those of you who have received and you want a, a second touch, you will shout this with boiling fire in your spirit. Holy Ghost fire! Touch me afresh. That is your own prayer. Something is happening over there already. We have not even started praying. Something is happening over there. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Masakatanda kaya boshende raba.
Baria Bosa, the power, the power, the apostle power. Is just the same today. The master was the same. The power, the power, the apostle power. Is just the same today. Yeah. Balakaribo soponda kanta. Manako soponde ke ya bo shente rabo konta. Barike sependa ke la kaya bo shente raba. Yes. I want the fire that is fresh. I want the power that is fresh. All power cannot do. I want the power that is fresh. I want the fire that is fresh. I want the fire that is fresh. All fire cannot be. I want the fire. Yes, continue to say it. Continue to say it. Don't change it. Don't change it. Continue, continue. Basopo katenda kanda. Ribo soponde ke yebo shenta. Mana ribo soponde ke yebo shenta raba. Continue to say it. Oh, yes. Don't go back to the English. Begin to speak. That heavenly language. Asapia li katenda kayaba. Rapa la kata li kanda. Rapa pasa da kantia. As I receive a fresh touch of the power of God. Receive, 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 receive. That fresh touch of the power of God. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Amen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Don't keep, yes, yes. Don't go back to the English. Bukaya Boshende Katera Bosanta Peri Boko Soponde Kaya Boshende Rabaraba Makantenda Rabosotonda Kaya Boshente Raba Rapia Likatenda Ka Amen God is opening the eyes of some people Some are receiving the fresh touch of the power of God the arrangement is taking place in many lives. This is not a night to keep quiet. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Masekaya boshende rabokontia. Darebo sanda kaya boshende kera basanda. Manakanda rabo setela kaya boshende. Neka tende kandia. the fire of the Lord come down. Let the fire of the Lord come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord 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 from heaven come down. 
let the fire of the Lord come down. Amen. Let the fire of the Lord come down. Let the fire of the Lord come down. Let the fire of the Lord from heaven come down. Let the fire of the Lord come Amen. Yes. Ah, yes. Aha. Yes. Don't be afraid. Speak it out. Don't be afraid. Masika Tenda. A person is receiving the gift of prophecy over there. Amen. I see many things happening. I see strangers being challenged. I see lives changing. Under the anointing of God upon your life now. You will now shout this prayer louder than anyone here. Dry bones of my life. Come alive now. In the name of Jesus. Dry bones of my life. Come alive now. Maseka tenda kaya boshenda. Aha. 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 Yes. Yes. It's happening. It's happening. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh-huh. This is wonderful. Shout this again loud and clear under that anointing. My star manifest by fire in the name of Jesus. Yes. Aha. 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 Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Under that same anointing, you shout this louder than anyone around you. Like Goliath! My enemies die by your sword in the name of Jesus, like Goliath, die by your sword, die by your sword, die by your sword. Bosenta kepe ya boshende rabakanda, daribo soponde ke ya boshente rabakolaba. Aha, aha. Tonight is tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Under that anointing, you shout this again. Strange forces. Hold me down. Down. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.